Unit 2, Financial Calculations and Personal Financial Planning, Lecture 5, Debt Management and Consolidation, Part A. Debt Management With regards to debt management, one should distinguish between credit and debt. Credit is defined according to the National Credit Act as the deferral of payment owed to a person or a promise to defer such payment. In other words, credit is a power to buy or borrow on trust. Debt is something that is actually owed or a state of obligation to pay something that is owed. Before deciding on debt management strategy, the reasons one individual has gone into debt must be looked at and categorized into short term, such as unexpected debt or long term, such as chronic debt due to not being able to meet financial obligations. And in some reasons why individuals go into debt, cause of mismanagement of funds, undisciplined buying habits, poor advice from financial advisors, an excess lifestyle, possible retrenchment from work, or any unexpected medical expenses. Some strategies to manage excessive debt levels are pay off a debt of a higher interest rate first, transfer more expensive debt into debt of a lower interest rate, consolidate smaller loans into one larger loan, liquidate investments, sell non-essential assets, pay additional amounts into a mortgage bond, communicate with creditors, apply for a loan to repay the original debt, and if all else fails, declare insolvency. Debt consolidation. Debt consolidation is when a client pays off all their short or medium term debt by increasing their bond amount. And this is used as a debt management strategy. So if a client is battling with his monthly cash flow, then debt consolidation can improve the monthly cash flow. The only downside to this is that cost is generally higher because you will be paying off a loan for a longer period of time so you have higher interest payments. And when advising a client if debt consolidation is effective, the financial plan needs to compare the monthly payments before and after the debt consolidation. Sarah has a bond of 2 million rand and two other outstanding loans with a combined value of 290,000 rand. She'd like to consolidate the smaller loans into her current bond. What is the solution? Sarah will increase her bond to 1.79 million rand, that's the outstanding balance of 1.5 million, plus the combined value of a short-term debt. So she will take on the 290,000 rand that she borrowed against her bond and pay the student loan and the vehicle loan leaving her with one payment instead of three every month. Jason wants to consolidate his debt. He currently has a 2.9 million rand bond, a 350,000 rand student loan, and a vehicle loan of 280,000. And you're also given the interest rates, the term, and the outstanding balances of each loan. And we tell you this is the only debt that he has. Calculate the following. Question 1. What is Jason's new bond payment if he were to consolidate his debt? Question 2. What will Jason save in the short term in terms of monthly payments? Question 3. What does Jason pay in the long term? To calculate Jason's new monthly payment when once he has consolidated his debt, you'll take the outstanding balance of a bond, the student loan, and the vehicle loan, which was given in the question, that will be your present value for your calculation. When we told you the bond is for 20 years, and it's another 12 years left. So you're going to use your N as the balance of that term. So 12 years left, monthly payments times 12, gives you 144. That will be your N. I mean, you should get a payment of 36181.